Kuna Ziwa. I'm Jessalyn. Let's dive into what's new in DevTools in Chrome 105. First up, a highly requested feature. You can now set a breakpoint and replay user flow step by step in the recorder. Here, I recorded a user flow to order coffees. Let's set a breakpoint at the checkout step by clicking on the blue dot next to it. Start replay the user flow now. The replay will continue until it hits the breakpoint. Great! There are two new buttons on the top. Click on this button to execute the user flow one step at a time. This helps you to debug your user flow at the pace you want. Alternatively, you can cancel the replay or resume the user flow execution. You can set more than one breakpoint on the steps and click to remove them if you need to. Apart from that, the recorder also added support for mouse over events. Let's start a new recording. Hover over the div to open a pop-up menu. Click on a menu item to update the text on screen. End the recording now and try to replay it. Sadly, the replay failed because it cannot find the menu item. The hover step is not captured during the recording. It is hard for the recorder to automatically capture hover events because when you move the mouse around, you are basically hovering on every element on the page. What you can do here is to manually add a step before the click, expand it, change the type to hover, and use the selector picker to pick on the div. You can edit the selector manually as well, but I find the selector picker more convenient. Try to replay the user flow again, and yes, the user flow completes successfully. There are more events supported in the recorder. Go to goo.girl slash devtools recorder dash reference to learn them all. Next, the Performance Insights panel now detects flash of unstyled text and invisible text as potential root causes for layout shifts. Open the Performance Insights panel via run command Performance Insights and measure a page load. Did you notice the font changes during the page load? As the font loads, it causes layout shifts. Click on the Layout Shift screenshot and expand the Potential Root Causes section. Here, you can identify the font file that causes the shift. Hover over the warning sign next to the font display property to learn about the potential fix. Apart from that, you can now get more actionable insights for the largest contentful pane in the Performance Insights panel. LCP is an important metric for measuring perceived load speed. A fast LCP helps reassure the user that the page is useful. In the Performance Insights panel, view the LCP details by clicking on the LCP bash at the top or in the Insights pane. Understand the LCP element, identify its critical path and the resources that slow it down, as well as get suggestions on how to fix them. Next, use the top layer bash to understand the concept of the top layer and visualize how the top layer content changes. The dialog element has recently become stable across all major browsers. When you open a dialog, what happens behind the scene is that the browser will put it into a top layer. The top level content will then render on the top of all others' content. To help you visualize the top layer elements, DevTools added a top layer container at the end of the elements panel. Expand the container. You can hover to highlight the dialog and the backdrop of the container. Click on the Reveal Bash to jump to the top layer element. Next to the top layer element, there is a bash as well. You can click on it to jump to the top layer container. Next, you can now attach WASM debugging information manually during runtime. Debugging information for WASM is similar to source map for JavaScript. You use them to map the code and better debug your application. Open a WebAssembly file in the Sources panel. Right-click in the editor and select Add Draft Debugging Info to attach debugging information on the fly. 
Next, you can use DevTools to test the URL protocol handler registration for PWA. Protocol handler is not a new concept. In your mobile phone, when clicking on a hyperlink with a mail to URL, you are given a few options to open it with native email apps. These options are shown because these apps support the mail to URL scheme. Applying the same concept, let's say a user installs your PWA on their device. Your PWA has registered a custom URL scheme, Web plus Coffee, similar to Mail2. When other web pages have a hyperlink to open the Web plus Coffee URL, the user can now open this link directly in your PWA instead of the browser. This feature is currently only available on desktop. It allows you to build a more integrated experience for your PWA. Go to web.dev slash URL dash protocol dash handler to learn more about it. During development, you can use DevTools to test if the protocol handler works correctly. In the application panel, click on the manifest pane and open the protocol handler section. The dropdown shows a list of registered protocols. In the text box, type some value to test if the link opens in your PWA. Here is a bonus tip. Do you know you can inspect DevTools with DevTools and record the user flow with it? Hmm, doesn't that sound a bit confusing? Let's undock DevTools into a separate window. In the console, type Command Option C to open another DevTools. Our team uses this feature to inspect and debug Chrome DevTools itself. DevTools extension developers use this too. Next, start a new recording in the recorder, navigate around DevTools, and click some buttons. All the steps are captured accordingly. Stop the recording now and replay it. There you go. Record and replay DevTools user flows with DevTools. It is mind-blowing. All right. There are more new features covered in my blog post. And as usual, the link is in my video description. Thanks for watching. See you in four weeks for Chrome 106. Ciao.